Good morning, friends. Please stand as you're able for our call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. If he, it is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. If you'll remain standing, our opening hymn this morning is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. You can find it on page 400 in your hymnal, or the words are on the screen. I, I want to begin with the announcement of, if you haven't found it yet, this is a scripture reading plan for our congregation, and you will receive it at the end of the service. It's, uh, I think, uh, behind the pews on the table. Uh, please feel free to take it. If you remember, maybe last week I said to you that something is coming, and this is what I'm, I was referring to. Uh, as I said that, uh, the Word of God, two-week sermon series that we had, and we, as a congregation, need to get to the Word of God every single day. Amen? Amen? Yes, and that's the reason. This is a custom-made thing. It's not like randomly I threw something here. Uh, but it's a custom-made, designed for our congregation starting tomorrow. So February 6th, starting tomorrow, you will have a daily scripture reading plan. And I want to say, I'm not imposing it on you, but because of the survey, only 11% are having this daily scripture reading in their lives, and God's word is so important for us. Amen? Amen? So I planned for you. And if you do not like my plan, you don't have to follow. But I will ask you, what's your plan? And if you say, I don't have one, I would say, mine is better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the announcements. I have okay. got some announcements. 
So with the announcements, next Sunday, as many of you might know, the vote has been changed to 2 o'clock. Um, at the end of the service today, Pete Paulson, chair of our transition team, will be able to speak more regarding this vote. So on that note, um, there will be a luncheon served right after church next Sunday. And please plan on joining us for lunch and fellowship, and then you'll... Okay. <laughs> I don't know who's... Alice? I think uh, you can recommend your su suggestion to us after the service. How about that? We will communicate to them. Okay, so again, the vote is next Sunday at 2 p.m. with a potluck following right after the church. And then on Sunday, February 26th, in the Great Hall, right after worship, Outreach is going to be having a chili cook-off. This event will be for fun, fellowship, restoration, and outreach. The outreach ministry is looking for volunteers to bring in a crock pot of chili to be tasted and judged or not. And there is a sign-up sheet on the table in the back where our usual sign-ups are. And we're asking for chili and desserts. Now the desserts will not be judged. but they will be greatly appreciated. Please sign up if you're willing to bring chili as we need to know how much chili is going to be available. If you don't want your chili judged, indicate that us or tell, or tell us when you bring it to the kitchen on the 26th. The outreach portion of this event is to show our appreciation to all our first responders. If we get enough volunteers to bring chili, we'll invite them to join us for this tasty fun event. That's why we need lots of volunteers. Sign up with your mild, hot, very hot, vegan, turkey, meaty, or beanie chili, and we want to see who's going to be voted Grace United Methodist Church Chili Cook-Off Champ. So there you have it. Bring your chili, sign up. We've got a winner sitting out here somewhere. <laughs> now that we're done with the announcement, it is time for our, our congregational prayer, and we invite anyone who would like to come up to the altar to please do so and take your prayers and concerns to God. Almighty God, King of the universe, we know that you have created us in your own image, and your Holy Spirit has prompted us to grow in faith in you and in your will for our lives. You have placed eternity in our hearts and given us power to discern good from evil. Give us desperation, Lord, to seek things that endure and to reveal those which perish. Spur us each and every day to seek your wisdom and guidance through your word and sacrament. 
Inspire us to wait in the quiet for your voice to come to us so that we may hear your will for our lives. Prompt us to listen, Lord, to your voice alone, even in the midst of our noisy world. You listen to our prayers, O God, and you have mercy on us when we ask for forgiveness. Give us the grace of knowing that you have more in store for us than forgiveness. You have a path for us to follow and a purpose for us to pursue. Make us deaf to all other desires of the flesh and of worldly success. We submit ourselves to you alone and willingly become captives to the obedience of Christ. Help us surrender our desires to you, Secretary Will. Lord, speak to us that we may speak. We ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit speak to us now as we wait on you for wisdom, insight, and direction. Whatever you show us or direct us to do, we pray that we will quickly and confidently obey. Give us clean and complete in hearts, oh Father. We ask this to you, spoken words, in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us rise for this time of praise songs. Let's worship God. And I'm sure you are familiar with this song now, by now, because we have done it several times, How Great Is Our God. And the second one, when uh, our liturgist will announce about the offering, you can remain seated at the time, or you can sit down. But let us focus on our God, and let's lift up our voices and say how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time God had three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all will see how great, how great. above all names, name above all names, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. Let's say one more time, name above all names, name above all names, worthy How great is our God, how great, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all will see how great, how great is our God. If you'll, please, if you'll please be seated, and at this time, the ushers will be coming forward for our tithes and offerings. As we give our offering to the Lord, let's continue to worship God and say, God, draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire No one else will do Cause nothing else could take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find the way Bring me back to you Your 
You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. Nothing else will do. Nothing else could take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way. Bring me back to you. You're all I want. You're all. God, we just thank you for this wonderful time where we can gather together as your children, as the body of Christ, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to offer our worship. Lord, not only our voices, we offer our tithes and offerings, knowing that our giving makes difference. Use us and use these gifts for the transformation of this world. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. While you are still standing, this is our time to greet one another, and I want to bring greetings to you from my wife. She sent me a message and said, please give my greetings to the church, so receive it. And let's uh, greet one another uh, in the name of Jesus Christ.
As everybody finds their seats, we will start the scripture lesson. Please stand to hear the scripture reading this morning. It comes to us from John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my father's house, in my father's name, testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please Thanks be seated. Be to God. Please be seated. A man was having a hard time communicating with his wife and he thought that she is hard of hearing. She is losing her hearing ability. So she, he started, uh, he thought that let me just uh, do a test without letting her know that he's doing some kind of test on her. So one evening she was sitting in the living room and he took a chair and sat way behind at the end of the living room and whispered, can you hear me? No response. So he, he took one or two steps, sat down again, can you hear me? No response. Third time, he tried again, can you hear me? No reply. So the fourth time, he went very close to her, right behind where she was sitting, and asked one more time, can you hear me? To much to his surprise and chagrin, she responded with irritated voice, yes, for the fourth time. <laughs> now you can decide who needs to hear. All right, I see Valerie is saying, <laughs> all right. I hope uh, you will not have a fight at home. <laughs> okay. Now, with this, hearing people and hearing their voices is everyday life as we live our lives. And today, we are welcoming you with this two-part sermon series, Hearing the Voice of God. Listening to God, hearing the voice of God. Now, if I ask you, when was the last time you heard God's voice? What would be your response? Yes, some of you will say today, and also it will depend on how much we want to hear God's voice, and also whether God speaks to us all the time or not. You know, it depends on each and every, it's a very subjective question. You know, if you are not trained in a certain way, you will say it's a very subjective question whether God speaks to us or not and how often God speaks to us or not. And we also know that we have a way of uh, hearing God's voice and turning off that voice. This is all up to us. We may think that we are hearing, pretending to be hearing, but yet we may not be hearing. So as we begin this sermon series, I will continue with this. Next week, we have a packed service today. We have communion. I have to be mindful of that. Uh, so on this first Sunday of the sermon series, I just want to start with some, uh, some conversations here. You know, how, how do we know that we are hearing God's voice? Sometimes we think it's God's voice. Sometimes we think it's my own voice. Sometimes we think that it's Satan's voice. It's very dis difficult to distinguish between voices. Am I speaking something that makes sense to you 
right? We all go through this. We all wrestle with this. You know, is this my voice? Is this Satan's voice? Is this God's voice? Is this someone else's voice? So as we enter into this two-week sermon series, I just wanted to ask you, when do you know that you're hearing God's voice? But normally, generally speaking, we do not live like this all the time. Is this God's voice or not, right? Every single day, we know that we have a common sense. How many of you know what a common sense is? Right? We live by common sense. We are not always spiritualizing it. So all those who are like on the edges of the seat, you know, everything is going to be spiritualized here? No. We live by common sense, right? God has given us reason. God has given us common sense. And most of us, we will say that every single day, I don't really pay attention to whether God is speaking to me or not. I live by common sense, right? Give, uh, live by reason, right? I live by expert, experts' advice, right? We go for advice to those who are expert in certain areas, in different domains of our lives. We hear their voices. And we say whether we want to do it or not. So. Here we are trying to understand how to hear God's voice, but at the same time acknowledging our day-to-day -day life that every single day we live our lives not really spiritualizing everything, but we use common sense, we use reason, we use emotions. Many people use, hear their emotions voice. They keep reason behind. All is dominating them is their emotions. Whenever they speak something, whenever they interpret something, it's all about their emotions because they're hearing their emotions so much. Are you following what I'm saying here? Even if it doesn't make sense to others because they are so much heavily laden by their emotions. Where do we find God's voice there? Can God use our emotions? Can God use our logic? Can God use our common sense? At the same time, we can say that God is speaking. Of course, but there are things that we need to keep in mind. And I think I will very much uh, wait for next week, but I wanted to start this conversation here. And when it comes to tough decisions, you know, co common sense is there. When it comes to tough decisions, some of, the, some of us will go for utilitarian ethics. You know what is utilitarian ethics or utilitarian philosophy? They would say that, I think this is right. I don't care about right and wrong. They are more in, saying that end justifies the means. That is utilitarianism. End justifies the means. means in this tough decision, uh, I think, what is the optimum outcome, the best outcome for this? I would aim for that. I don't care about this. Is it right? This is wrong. So end justifies the means. As long as I'm able to see at the end, everything is going to be OK, I think we can go with that. So they, they keep. Uh, right and wrong kind of thing at the back. They don't start with that. Then there are others who are pragmatists. Pragmatism is all about, is this, is this workable? Is this something that will help us get the maximum outcome? There's no right and wrong. It's all about how to live this life for the best of our lives. And now again, you know, it's a slippery slope because it depends on what do you think is the best and who decides what is the best. So, but we live our lives every single day with those things. When it comes to tough decision, we buy into some kind of philosophies. What works? What doesn't work? What I think? What do you think? And then at the end, it is all about what is the right voice I think is. Again, it comes to, I think, I think, I think. When it comes to scripture, we come to know that God speaks. And interestingly, throughout the scripture, right from the beginning, Genesis to the end of the Holy Bible, the word of God, God speaks to us in all domains of our life. Means the one who has created us, we spent two weeks on the word of God. By now, I think we are prepared to hear this message that God's word dictates how we have to live. I will come to that again next week. Pardon me, I may repeat this next week, but you have to come back next week to hear some of the things that help us clarify things, how to hear God's voice. So now, here we are. When we look at the scripture, we know that God speaks. And God speaks, interestingly, in all spheres of our lives. 
when Jesus was on this earth I would say he addressed all that is pertaining to our life from heaven hell relationship with one another relationship with God vertical and horizontal dimensions everything Jesus spoke about there was hardly anything I would say Jesus left out he covered the top things under which other things will fall but he covered life amen if you haven't read the scripture if you start analyzing what Jesus talked about from money from this and that whatever topic is in your mind look in the scripture and you will find that why would God do that because God cares for us and he wants us to hear God's voice now why because we are wired to hear voices we live our lives by hearing voices there's a voice a silent voice or a loud voice or a voice of the culture a voice of people a voice of your dad and mom voices are all around us and we hear those voices and we act out even a person who is having a hallucination or going through some difficult time psychologically is responding to the voice interview them and they will say I did this because there was a voice voice was coming and I did it I didn't know what I was doing a voice no wonder why the scripture among all the metaphors and analogies uses the analogy or the metaphor of God being our shepherd and people being sheep that simply means if in the Old Testament and in the New Testament Jesus uses that analogy to show his relationship with us and our relationship with him basically it means that it's indispensable absolutely indispensable for the sheep to live without the shepherd period why because we all know that sheep without the shepherd will get lost will go into places dangerous places without food without provision so I don't have to repeat Psalm 23 which David says the Lord is my shepherd I don't have to talk much about the Old Testament when Jesus himself again says I am the good shepherd where God in the Old Testament talks about being the shepherd God the father being the shepherd so here we are we understand that sheep cannot live without hearing the voice of the good shepherd Am I making sense so far? Amen. So say amen. amen. Let Mel and uh, Jerry, is it Jerry? Yeah, Mel and Jerry roost you here one more time. Amen. amen. All right. Thank you. So here we are trying to understand how we live our lives. We understand common sense. We understand reason. We understand experience. We understand all those things. And we also understand the utilitarian th theory of how to make the best of this life, forgetting about whether it's right and wrong, and we'll decide whether that is right or wrong. Or we become pragmatics. Practically speaking, I'm a man of practice. Practically speaking, I don't think it goes, period. For me, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. It's all about practicality. But then comes Jesus on the scene, and he says, I'm not asking you to assassinate your brain that I use most of the time. God has given us common sense. God has given us reasoning. It's all God's gift for us to use. But at the same time, we know that for us as believers, as Christians, as followers of Christ, our pragmatism, our utilitarian theory, theories can go wrong. We may be very sincere, but may be wrong at the same time. Can you believe that? That you can be very sincere in your love, in your faith, and be wrong at the same time? Some of you are scratching your head. How can it be? I'm very sincere. I love Jesus. I'm very sincere. I have strong faith in Jesus. I am very sincere. Is it possible that you may be sincere in what you do and be wrong at the same time? Billy Graham, I'm not sure whether you heard this or not. Billy Graham, in his uh, autobiography, and also I was watching a video, he talks about that, that sincerity does not mean that you are right. Being sincere doesn't mean you're right. 
let me read out something uh, what Billy Graham wrote in his autobiography. Once I was sick, mother thought she was giving me cough medicine, but she gave me iodine instead. Some people will say iodine. Where I grew up, we will say iodine, but iodine, iodine, whatever. But we all know that this is not good if you go beyond certain dose. So she said, he, he says that my mother loved me. She was sincerely giving me something to help me, but that was not good. I will not tell you the rest of the story because that will take away our time. But you can find what happened or you can read his autobiography. What he meant to say that many sincere people are out there. They love Jesus. They can be very sincere in their faith. They can be very sincere in their love. Yet at the same time, they can be wrong. Why am I repeating this? The reason is that, that we should be open to hear God's voice because many a times our sincerity can also become a hindrance in hearing God's voice. You know why I'm saying this? Because in John 10 today, the Jews are around Jesus. And let me tell you, these Jews are serious people. They were waiting for Messiah. Amen? Religious leaders were not just simply practicing their religion. They were really sincere, serious people. We cannot just say that they were crooks. No, at all. They were fasting. They were praying. They were asking God, God, send us the Messiah. And when Jesus is preaching among them, if you have read the scripture which uh, uh, Diane has so beautifully read for us, if you remember, the Jews are saying, they were confused. They were kind of wondering in suspense and asking Jesus, please tell us, are you the Messiah? And Jesus said, I already told you. I am the Messiah. In other words, what I'm doing, he said, see, look at the works that I'm doing. What were they missing? They were sincere in asking, yet it, they were not right because they were too sincere. They missed the boat by not looking into the word of God. When Jesus quoted scripture, when Jesus said this is fulfilled in Luke, in him, he was basically quoting from the Old Testament and these people were almost like too blind to see. Things were happening right in front of their eyes. Jesus, the word of God, Jesus, the creator of the universe was speaking, but they were not listening. You can hear things, but you may not be listening. What is listening? Listening means you take an action to follow through what you heard. Listen to me. You can hear things and you can ignore, but listening is I want to submit to what I heard. So what I use here right now is just these people Jesus is among them, and there is a crowd. Those who are listening to Jesus, they're following Jesus, including Jesus' disciples. Though they do not understand everything, yet they have enough faith and trust that they are listening to Jesus, following. Jesus' disciples are among them. The crowd is among them. Though they do not, do not fully understand what does it mean to call Jesus the Messiah as if they have not really grasped it fully. However, we can distinguish the crowd. One is against Jesus. The other one is just trying to be ama just amazed and trying to understand what Jesus is saying. His disciples, if you remember that, Andrew goes and tells, we have found to Nathaniel, we have found the word of God talks about the Messiah. We have found that Messiah, right? Peter comes and they are following Jesus. But you see, you can sincerely follow, but at the same time, you can be wrong. Now, let me give you another example. Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say I am? Peter responded, you are the Christ, the Son of God. You are the Messiah, the Christ. What was Peter hearing? Peter was hearing from God because Jesus confirmed that, that who revealed this to you? God, my father revealed it to you. That means Peter's ears were tuned to what God wanted to say. But you see, the next moment, Peter's faith is strong in Jesus. 
Peter is a good disciple. He's a sincere disciple. But the next moment when Jesus says that I will be crucified or I will be persecuted, the same Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke Jesus. You know what did Jesus say to Peter in the next moment? Get behind me, Satan. Do you see Peter's faith was sincere? Right? Do you follow what I'm saying? Peter was a faithful disciple of Jesus, but at the same time, he was paying attention to what? Not God's voice this time. It was the enemy's voice. Jesus said, this is, get behind me, Satan. But Jesus also added, you have a carnal mind. Basically means, Peter was reflecting the worldview of the Jews around that time who were waiting for a political messiah. So what I see here, at least four things are happening. What, is, what are those four things? Why they are not able to hear? Why Peter was not able to hear? One is they were proud. Proud of their own knowledge and learning. Now these Jews and religious leaders are coming. They have idea what the prophet said. They have idea what the Old Testament says. But in their pride, they are missing the big picture where Isaiah 53, that suffering servant. And when Jesus does all the miracles from Isaiah 35, they were completely missing that, yet they were sincere. Am I making sense? Peter was sincere in his faith, but it is possible that you can be sincere in your faith, you can love Jesus, at the same time you can be dead wrong. And I don't need to give you more illustrations to prove that. But I would say four things were hindering. One, they were proud. Proud in their own learning. They could not hear what God was speaking. Christ was doing something new in their midst. But they were set in their old ways. They were set in their mindset. This is how we want to see. If Jesus keep going, we will be in problem with the Roman government. So they were fearful about their religion. They were fearful about whatever political agenda they have. Their pride was coming in their way. Number one, pride. Second, prejudice. They had decided from day one, we don't like Jesus, period. Now whatever he will say, <laughs> we are just going to outright reject it without even giving a thought. Did you see that attitude among Jews? Jesus was doing miracles after miracles after miracles, but they stubborn heart because they were prejudiced. You know, you cannot explain things to prejudiced people since, since they have already decided that in their heart. No matter what you say, I'm not listening. You can be sincere, you can be wrong at the same time. You can love Jesus with all your all that you have, but you can be wrong. For that, we must hear God's voice. Are you following what I'm saying right now? That's why we need to hear God's voice when it comes to the church, the followers of Jesus Christ who left everything behind and said, Lord Jesus, I want to follow you, then we need to go all the way in. Not half-heartedly, because that will be like Peter's situation. Hearing God at the same time, hearing the devil's voice and thinking, oh, this is, this is right. So pride, prejudice, another one, preoccupation. It's all related. They were preoccupied with their worldview. What I think is the case, and this is what I think. They were preoccupied. I will just leave it here. Next week, we will pick up again. And I want to ask you today, are you hearing God's voice? The scripture records that God speaks. God speaks through silence also. Our choir did a wonderful job. Let them give a round of applause to them. That anthem, prayer anthem, was talking about that hearing God's voice. God speaks. God speaks face to face as he spoke to Moses. The scripture says, God speaks. God uses, God uses audible voices, a soft voice in your mind. God uses different means to speak to us. God uses angels. God 
sends his Holy Spirit to speak to us. God even uses an animal. If you want to know about that, Numbers 22, you will find out. God uses Balaam's donkey to get attention so that he can correct the way of this prophet. God speaks at all times. But the question is, am I hearing the voice of God? In our difficult, tough decisions, how we can hear the voice of God? Maybe these things we need to keep in mind. First of all, the humility. I can be very sincere in my love and faith, but I can be wrong. So if you acknowledge that, that gives you some room to hear. Amen? If you're just going up, this is what I think, this is my philosophy, this is this, this is that. Beware that you may not be missing God's voice. God speaks. The reason God speaks, because he cares for us. God has the best for his sheep. We cannot live without hearing God's voice. Yes, we can use all that God has given us, the common sense, the reasoning and all, but when it comes to living our life for God's glory, we need to keep those secondary. God will use those, but he, the first thing will be humble. Lord, I love you so much, I can be wrong, so help me hear your voice. And the last thing I would say, God will never contradict his own word. And that's why we need to be rooted in the word of God so that we can verify is this the voice of God. The reasons of this world can deceive us, but the reason God gives through his word will never betray us. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. May the Lord bless us with humility to hear God's voice. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. As we live in this life, help us to hear your voice. Without that, we can be sincere and say we love you and we can be wrong and just be used for enemy's agenda. Lord, you have a plan and purpose for our lives and through our lives. Hear us and speak to us as we cry out to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll pick up next week, but we have communion today, so I would like to invite our communion servers and Linda, Linda Thomas has already told me that I cannot mess up with the plates because she has already put some extra communion for us. So choir, you don't have to worry. Even if we mess up there, it'll all be good. And after I have communion with the, the servers, the ushers are going to direct you. Okay. On the night when Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to the Father, gave to his disciples and said, this is my body which is broken for you. And then after the supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to the Father, gave to his disciples and said, this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of their sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the bread and the cup. We come to your table knowing that you love us and care for us. Lord, as we participate in your table, we pray that nourish us with the bread and the cup that we might become the bread of life to the world, redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon the elements. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Make us one for your mission and help us to hear your voice and help us to follow you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen.
Let us rise and sing this closing hymn, I am thine, O Lord. And remember, after the service is ended, Pete Paulson will take five to seven, seven, ten minutes approximately. And that is one of the reasons I'm releasing you early today, okay? <laughs> so stay back. Let's sing together. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to the power of the Holy Spirit that is within us. To him be the glory in the church and through the church in the world now and forevermore as we determine to hear God's voice for the glory of God. Go now. Amen.